Welcome to this video in which we will do an analysis of the forces in the support structure for this diving board that we have on the screen. Now this is a frame analysis as opposed to a truss analysis because each of the members in the system, the diving board itself, the uh, two members that are supporting it, uh, each have three or more uh, forces acting on them, which means that our approach for trusses won't work. So what we'll do then is we will uh, actually do three different free body diagrams. Uh, the reason we'll do three is we have eight points here where we have both an X and a Y component to a reaction force. We have one point here, B. We'll assume that the interface between the support B and the diving board is frictionless. So at B, we'll assume that the reaction force is only vertical. So we have four points where we have two unknowns and one point where we have one unknown. That's a total of nine unknowns. With each free body diagram in two dimensions, we can get up to three equations. And since we have nine unknowns, we need to have nine equations, and we can get nine equations by looking at three different free body diagrams. So that's the reason we'll take the approach that we do. Um, the only other things we need to point out before we um, start going is we'll assume the board's mass is 150 kilograms and that that mass is uh, centered at the midpoint of the board. And we'll assume that the elements that make up the support structure are, uh, their weight is negligible relative to the other weights in the system. So we won't consider the weights of these elements in the support structure. Uh, the support structure is connected to the ground at points D and E with pins. So um, in both of these connections, we have both a vertical and a horizontal component of the reaction force. OK, so with that introduction, let's go ahead and do a free body diagram of the diving board. OK, so here's my diving board. At point A, right here, I have a horizontal component to the reaction force and I have a vertical component to the reaction force. At two meters along the board I have the uh, vertical component due to the reaction force at B and there is no horizontal component due to the fact that um, uh, we're assuming a frictionless uh, interface between the board and the support. Then a little bit farther out here, I have what I'll call WB. This is the weight of the board. And this will be uh, 150 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And then out here, I have the weight of the diver that uh, sort of hapless looking uh, stick figure it actually looks more like he's walking the plank than that he's going to dive. But in any case, that's 75 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so these are all of the forces acting on the board. I have um, distances from the end of the board to FBY is 2 meters. Uh, from the end of the board to this point is 2.4 meters. And the total length of the board is 4.8 meters. Okay, so for this free body diagram, let's now um, sum the forces in the x and y direction and find the moments about a point. That'll give us three equations and we'll begin to start solving for unknowns. So if we look at the sum of forces in the x direction, because we have static equilibrium, those should be zero. The only force in the x direction is FAx. So this tells us that FAx is equal to zero. Okay, that was easy enough. Um, let's look next at the sum of moments about point A. And we'll set this equal to zero. So we're looking at the sum of the moments about this point. We have um, FBY. It will 
tend to induce a counterclockwise rotation, so this would be a positive moment, times 2 meters. Uh, we have then uh, minus WB, negative, because WB is inducing a clockwise rotation. It has a moment arm of uh, 2.4 meters, and minus WD, which has a moment arm of 4.8 meters, and these will be equal to zero. Okay, we know WB, it's given right here, we know WD, it's given right here. FBY is the only unknown. We can solve this then for FBY to get that FBY is 3,528 newtons. Okay, so finally let's look at the summation of forces in the y direction and set those equal to zero. And we have in the y direction FAY plus FBY minus WB minus WD and this is equal to zero. And again, we know WB and we know WD, we know FBY, so we can solve for FAY. And that is equal to minus 1,323 newtons. Okay, so that's our first free body diagram. And uh, we've already got some, uh, we, we've actually, uh, from our three equations, been able to solve for three unknowns. Our next free body diagram will be the um, support structure. And again, to remind you how this is set up, we have a pin at A, a pin at this intersection C, a pin at D, and a pin at E. There's no pin at D. Okay, and so the next thing we need to do here, well, and to make sure the uh, distances are clear, from here to here is one meter, and uh, C is at the midpoint, from D to E is 2 meters, and again C is at the midpoint. Okay, so let's define our reaction forces here. Uh, we've already used um, a, a force at A, we had FAX and FAY, and we had FAX and FAY in the other free body diagram going to the right and up. And because that force at point A is the same for this free body, but it will be in the opposite direction, so it has the same magnitude but opposite direction, we'll have a force FAY here and a force FAX here, but we know that this guy's equal to zero, so we're not going to consider it any further. And since we also have used a force at B, in our previous free body diagram, here we'll have FBY, but it will be going in the direction opposite that we had in the first free body diagram. And again, the reason for that is that uh, reaction forces are, uh, on this part of the structure are equal and opposite to those uh, reaction forces um, on, the, uh, on the board. The other forces that we have here include uh, the uh, horizontal force component FDX, the vertical component FDY, the horizontal component FEX, and the vertical component FEY. Okay, so um, this uh, gives us now forces and uh, we know what FAY and FBY are. We've solved for those already. So here we have four unknowns, so we won't be able to solve for all of them, but if we choose our equations wisely, we will be able to solve for two of them. So let's first look at uh, the moment of these forces around the point D. Okay. Uh, FAY passes, the line of uh, action of this force passes through D, so it doesn't affect the moment. FEX, the line of action passes through D, so it doesn't affect the moment. Um, so we basically will have 
just FBY and FEY affecting this moment. Okay, so if we write out what the moment is, some of the moments about D is equal to zero. We have FBY, this will be a negative FBY because it's inducing a clockwise rotation. It's working through a moment arm of two meters from here to here. And so this will be times two meters. And then FEY is positive. It'll give us a positive moment because it's uh, working in a counterclockwise direction. It's also working through a moment arm of two meters. And so what this tells us then is that FEY is going to be equal to FBY. So we can say then that FEY is 3,528 newtons. Okay. If we look at the sum of the forces in the y direction and set those equal to zero, we have FDY plus FEY minus FAY minus FBY is equal to zero. We just computed FEY, so we know this. We know FAY and FBY from the previous free body diagram. So we're left then with FDY, which, or we can solve for FDY, and this is minus uh, 1,323 newtons. Okay, so even though we had four unknowns, we've actually been able to solve for two of them. The last uh, thing we'll do is uh, say the sum of forces in the x direction is zero. And in this case, that would be FDx plus FEx is equal to zero. And uh, we know FAx is already equal to zero, so I didn't put that in that equation. And from this, we can't solve for FDx or FEx. So we're just going to have to keep this equation and hope in our last three body diagram that we get some information that tells us what one of these values is and then we can find out what the other value is. So because I haven't used this equation, I'm going to label it star one. I don't know why I came up with the idea of labeling these equations with stars, but I think it's kind of nice. And we'll use this equation in our, uh, after we've done our next free body diagram to finish solving the problem. So it looks like I'm out of time, so we'll have to leave you hanging in suspense until the next uh, part two of this video in which we do the last free body diagram and come up with the final result. So stay tuned. <laughs>